Hello, I'm Rahul from the Fun Robotics Network, and here with me is Team 19053 Homo Sapiens from Romania. They have an amazing robot here at the Michiana Premier event, featuring an overdriven drivetrain, a turreted intake, and an extension outtake, and a hang that uses the same motors as their extension motors on a different slide system. Catch more on Behind the Box. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. All right, hello team 19053 Homo Sapiens. Thank you so much for being here today. Now let's start with your game strategy this year. I know you guys primarily do specimens. Why did you choose to go that for this year and how did that drive your game design choices? Okay, so our main um, objective was doing specimens because the whole season we are a sample bot and then we switched to specimens because we, we realized that having an extension, a really fast robot could make the difference, the difference in games because specimens just are worth more points overall. Okay, thank you. Now let's just jump straight into your drivetrain. I see you guys have an, two sets of gear trains rather than the standard one belt that teams do. You have like intermediate gear stage. Why did you guys choose to go for that? And what's the final ratio on your reels and how does that help you? Okay, so for the drivetrain, we use 1150 RPM motors and then we gear them down to 575. We uh, first have a stage that we gear down using gears and then a one-to-one -one with the belt. Uh, this helps with structural integrity because we have a more uh, more axles in there so the chassis doesn't get bent. And also, uh, in the end, it's a higher yield than just using a belt because that can get stretched over time and you can uh, lose some efficiency. All right, thank you so much for that. Now let's just jump straight into your horizontal slides. I see you guys have this like um, linkage driven with four sets of gears, which you've seen a few teams do this year. Uh, how's that been for you guys this year? How would you give some advice to other teams looking to implement a similar set of linkage driven slides like this? Okay, so for our linkage driven slides, we uh, use them because we found out that for a specific extension, it's just as fast as a motor. And because we have a light intake, we don't have a lot of backlash. And additionally to this, it also over centers when extended so that we can be moved during defense and that we save a lot of voltage. And if uh, I would recommend that um, you do a lot of testing and you find out uh, how you could make your linkage as small as possible uh, and be able to have the full range of motion. Nice. Now, I see what servos are you driving on your linkage? Have you issued with, have you had issues with servos breaking or things like that? Or has it been mostly good for you guys? Uh, we have two axle maxes uh, using an SPM, but um, we haven't had any problems really. Nice. Now, let's just jump into your intake. I see you guys have a, a turreted claw based intake similar to a lot of teams. How do you guys use that in autonomous and tell you up and has it helped you thus far? Okay, so actually um, our intake uh, is designed to be as uh, simple as possible with just some L beams and um, some servo blocks for uh, support and uh, to be sure that the ser servos don't break or have too much load on them. Every impact or shock goes into the bearing. Um, we um, wanted to remove an extra degree of freedom, a useless degree of freedom, with not having a wrist. So um, this just drops down. Um, we have uh, rotation for the claw and uh, in the autonomous period it's uh, really helpful for the basket auto and uh, the specimen one when uh, we use the vision and uh, collect the samples from the nice, uh, nice. submersible. Just Sorry. one thing on your vision, I see your cameras mounted here pretty high up. Uh, how have you used the limelight this year for vision in auto? Uh, we first found out that mounting it uh, static on the robot itself, the moving part would be just more consistent in auto and we just uh, use a modified version of the cattle pick detection. Nice, nice. Now, just let's just jump to your transfer. I see you guys have a set of Misumi slides. Uh, just try me what slides you're using, how you're transferring, how it's powered. Just break down the whole system. Okay, so for the outtake, we use 230, Misumi start 230, and that we pocketed to save a lot of weight. And then on the outtake, we have a three stage Misumi that's also pocketed, so we could save even more weight. And when transferring, we use uh, the geometry of the intake that folds in and then goes back, and we can then transfer. Nice. Now, just on those pocket Misumis, I think we've seen a few teams start to do this this year. Uh, how have you guys seen that? Uh, how have you guys 
And do you know exact numbers on how much it's saving you per slide or anything like that? Um, I think per slide is around 15 grams, but in total it's like over 200 grams, which nice. made the robot a lot lighter and uh, it uh, helped us so we could uh, afford to put another motor in the gearbox to make the robot overall faster because the weight of the motor is saved by the slides. Nice. Now on your transfer, I think I showed, saw you guys, you transfer with your intake slightly out. Why did you guys do that and how do you have, what tips do you have for teams looking to make other successful transfers? I would say that um, we have this mechanical hard stop right here, uh, which really helps us uh, because when the arm is in this position, it rests on the standoff instead of being in the air, which makes it so that shock can't affect the, the intake very much or the, or the transfer, I'm sorry. And then after that, we just uh, transfer outside the robot so that there's no risk of samples getting inside. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, uh, just on your outtake, uh, is there a reason you guys uh, have this risk mechanism on the end uh, in addition to your pivot? How do you guys use that for buckets and specimens? Uh, for specimens, it helps us because um, we can just uh, angle the wrist in order to score, mm -hmm. which is really great. And then for basket, it's uh, because uh, we can transfer in different positions in case something happens. Like we have a secondary transfer to transfer from the top. Nice. Now. Let's go into your hang. I think it's really cool how you have geared your same slide motors into a separate spool and using that diameter effect to change the torque. Describe to me how that works and why you guys chose such a design over something like a PTO or something. Okay, so we chose this design because it's way simpler than using a PTO and doesn't use any additional servos or any additional motors. This gearbox right here uh, of 1150 RPM motors are just connected to a main axle, which has a 48 millimeter pulley on it that uh, then moves the output. This main axle then powers the hang axle, which has two uh, 12 millimeter pulleys on it. And the difference of uh, pulley ratios makes it so that when the outtake is fully extended, the hang is fully extended. And when the outtake is fully down, the robot can then hang. Nice, that, that's really cool how that works. Now, is this the first design you guys opted to go for? and? or do you have more iterations on this for hang? Uh, the most important part would be getting the angle right of the hooks. Uh, these uh, hooks are angled this way so that um, they don't go outside the robot very much and then they auto align. You think the robot's center of gravity, when we pull the hooks down, uh, the robot automatically goes backwards a bit and then engages on the second part. Nice, that's really cool. Now, obviously this robot's really just mechanically complex, has so many moving components. Do you have any like key sensors you'd like to talk about and how what drives this entire system together, especially for things like your transfer or your outtake or anything like that? Uh, for uh, most of uh, our systems, we just use timers mm -hmm. when doing everything uh, because our robot is really consistent and we don't use a lot of uh, encoders. Uh, only for the outtake, we use the encoders and we try and reset them as often as possible to make sure we don't have error over time. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Team 19053 Homo Sapiens. You guys have an, um, had an amazing event at the Michiana Premier event, having posting some crazy high scores. This is Rahul reporting from the Fun Robotics Network. Catch me next time on Behind the Bot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started.